Hello and welcome back to Barkways. Here we are back in the engine bay. Um, I thought we'd do the next instalment on the V12 build. So, as you can see, um, piston wise, from the photo you see, we're now down to the last one. I thought one bore you were putting all 12 of them in, but I'll show you how we do one. Main components we've got here obviously, got the piston, I've got a gudgeon pin, and new bearing caps. Now, these everything's about being clean now. Everything, so I tend to unwrap them and fit them as I go. So these are very soft, it's called white metal, and it marks ever so easy. If I was to scratch that with my nail, it would take the surface off, which always seems bizarre, because that's the, the whole the rotation of the engine is on this soft white metal bearing surface. So unwrapping these. So this has all been washed off. I t again, I tend to wash off each piece as I, as I go. So these have all been washed and cleaned. So something else we've had done is the, the small ends, as I've spoken to before. We've got the big end, which is the, the, the crankshaft end, and the small end, which is the gudgeon pin end. So what we've had done, these, these phosphor bronze bushes in here, they're all new bushes, and you can see that's been made. So it fits that absolutely perfectly. Before, we had too much slack either side. So now that's a perfect fit in there. So what we do next is we get our oil can and we run a bit of oil around the shells and they just slide in and say it's trying to do these without sort of touching them too much so we just slide them in ever so gently. And then as you slide them in it gets a little bit of swarf here. You just have to wipe off as you slide it in. And the same with the other cap, a bit of oil Everything's about oiling everything. So being clean and just slide that in gently. Again, if there's any little swarf there. Now then the other thing that we do, everything that goes together needs some sort of assembly paste on it. So there's various on the market, we tend to use this one. Everything that goes in, and just wipe a little bit of that round, because when this thing first starts up and the oil pressure starts to pump round, there's gonna be some time when the only thing that's keeping this all together is the assembly paste. So everything gets assembled with this. It's like a sort of thick grease. If you use oil, sometimes oil will just disperse too quickly. Grease is too thick, so this is a proper assembly paste. There's various out there on the market. Some people use the black ones. There's all sorts, so we've, I've used this for years. So next thing on these, if you look here, the, the con rods are offset. This shell doesn't sit absolutely perfectly in the con rod. So the con rod will go on that way or that way, but if you put it on the wrong way, it's gonna, the crankshaft is gonna bind on the short edge because you've gotta make sure it goes the right way around. So everything on V12s, it's gotta be the right way around. So the best way I've found to do that a paste and just put some in here, some in there, and some on our pin. And again, that comes match with the piston, so that's going to go in there. We're going to slide that across, and the con rod's going to fit in the middle. Okay, so the reason why these shells are offset and these con rods are offset on V12s is that if you look here, you've got two. That one's already in. So you've got two com rods going to be on the same journal of the crankshaft. Where the bottom of the crankshaft is machined, there's a slight radius at the bottom. So the space for that is for that radius. And then when the two con rods rub together, then obviously they can almost be touching. So you've got to get the space for the machining radius there. So therefore that con rod goes in that way. If you put it on that way, the radius is going to rub on the on the bottom. So four cylinder engines and stuff don't have this because they have one one journal, one con rod. But because it's a flat plane V12, we've got two con rods per journal and it is possible, and we've seen it done, to have the con rods in the wrong way round. So if we spin this round and show you the other side, these stands are quite handy. So quick sanity check that this one's gonna go in number one. So I know that the offset's gonna go downwards. We've got our two slots, obviously the inlet valve's bigger than the exhaust, so this also goes to my right. So I've got my inlets on the left, my offset going down, and I can just 
slot that in nicely so I know that's the right way round as a pair. To stop the gudgeon pin coming out, because if that was to come out, it would rub against the, the wall. There's two ways of doing it. Sometimes they're pressed in, which you need to wind them in on a press, and sometimes they're held in with little clips. So these ones are held in with these little tiny clips that just go in there. Um, it's not as easy as it looks sometimes. It takes two or three goes. If they go ping, they're very easy to lose. So we'll just put those in. So that's got our, our pins in. So now we've got a, a piston and prom rod assembly. So what we do then, a little bit of oil just on the top. Again, you can never put too much on because the, the more oil you get, the more it's got to help it. So next thing is compressing the piston ring so we can push it into the bore. Now, the other thing is lining up the gaps as we did before. Remember when we were measuring the gaps on the piston rings, what you don't want is all the gaps lining up because obviously they'll leak. So you have to stagger them round. So you move them round the piston so they're sort of spread out in opposite places so you haven't got them. I can see there's one there, so I want the other one to be around here somewhere. And they're evenly spread out around the piston so you haven't got all the slots lined up. So next thing's more of our assembly paste to go around the piston rings because again, this is the only thing that's going to lubricate this piston skirt. Once it's going up and down, it'll get oil fed and flung around as it's normal running. But for that first fire up, and then run a bit of oil around there as well. To hold this in, so we've got to now compress those rings and slide them into the cylinder. So we've got like a band clamp here, which again, so this fits over the piston and as you do it up, what it does, it squashes the rings. And you can just feel that it does up hand tight. Some of you wonder why there's a hammer on the bench when we're building engines. This is why. Okay, so now we are making sure we're the right way around. And we're just easing the whole lot in there. Now what we've got to do now is make sure the band clamp is exactly on the top. So we've got to transfer the pistons through the band clamp and into the cylinder all in one go. So we just tap this gently to line the band clamp up. Hold that and we're tapping that through. You can see while holding the band clamp on. And the secret is so the piston ring to go through the band clamp straight into the cylinder all in one go. Now the thing is there it's sort of a sense of feel because you don't know if you've broken a piston ring or not it is possible if they get stuck and you jar it so it's a sort of sense of feel that as you do them I can feel them just sliding in gently because once this is on you can't take them out and see if they're broken and put them back in again so you've just got to go by feel and experience and then we just keep tapping it in until it just guides onto the crank shaft the other side. There you go. It's all about what it sounds like. I can hear that's just going in nice and gently. And if you come around the other side, if I turn the engine round, we can now see that the con rods come through and it's ready for the cap to go on the other side. <laughs>